I'm fighting this dude, this grown man. I'm barely 18. I'm fighting this dude, and um, I didn't know, but uh, like one of my, <clears throat> while I'm fighting him, one of my younger homeboys that's with me end up stabbing him, uh, and they like, they stabbed him pretty good. Like they, the knife was stuck in him, so they stabbed him and ran. Growing up as a young kid, uh, it was my mom and my dad that was taking care of us. Uh, however, uh, basically my mom and my dad were, were like drug dealers. They, they, they dealt drugs. Um, we had a lot of money, they had a lot of money. You know, we had cars, we had a house. They really weren't, you know, your, your average parents. They didn't really take care of us like, you know, like real parents do. Uh, obviously not when, you know, they're on drugs and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we had everything that we needed. My dad was always going in and out of jail uh, for various, various different reasons. So he was pretty much in and out of my life. My mom was there, however, you know, she was using drugs. And my mom was actually from a gang in Lincoln Acres National City, which is a, it's a predominantly Hispanic gang. It's a Sudanio gang in California, which is like a Mexican gang. Um, so when my dad was in prison, my mom would have like all the homeboys, you know, over at the house. Um, that was the kicking spot. Everybody came over there to get high. Basically, it was it was a trap house. All the money that he had made off the drugs and all that stuff, like, and all the cars. When he went to prison, my mom sold everything. Uh, my mom got really bad into her addiction. She sold everything. We lost we lost the house. We ended up moving to an apartment. Um, and it was the same deal at the apartment. All the homeboys over there hanging out, you know, drinking, smoking, doing drugs. The homeboys that used to come over there, they basically, you know, like would make me, my, my other brother, I have another brother that's about a year older than me. They used to make us fight. Um, basically, they, they, they taught us their ways. Um, you know, they taught us like, hey, you know, if somebody calls you a bitch, you don't ever let that slide. You know, that that's, 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 you know, the max disrespect that anybody can do. Pretty much my mom ended up going to jail too. Uh, one of the homeboys let her use a car that was stolen. She went on a high speed chase and went to prison. Um, so both my parents were in prison and then my brother, me and my brothers and sisters, uh, the homeboys from the neighborhood ended up taking care of us for a little bit. Since my aunt was my dad's sister, my brothers weren't my dad's kids. So they ended up separating us. Um, they ended up going with my grandmother and uh, me and my sister ended up staying with my aunt. Um, but I do remember like, as soon as we got there, like my aunt, like, I guess we found, found out we like, we had lice and all kinds of stuff. She, like she, she shaved all of our heads, um, you know, basically, you know, we were just like kids that were just on the street all the time. Like we didn't have any kind of structure. We didn't have, you know, really any, any parenting. So like I got into sports, I started playing sports, um, started doing really good. I was, you know, seventh, this was seventh grade, uh, end of seventh grade, uh, all the way up to like my freshman year is when I lived with my grandmother. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then I started running away from my grandmother's house as well. Um, started hanging out with uh, a, a group of people uh, out there that was pretty much also just like in the streets, smoking weed, popping pills. Um, so I hung out with that crowd and, and really we were like, we ended up making like our own little crew. I guess you, it wasn't really a gang because it was just a bunch of kids. Um, we had our own little crew and, and, uh, from there, like I said, I just started running away and, and, and started getting into the streets a little bit. I was about 14, maybe 15. Um, uh, and, uh. I remember just, it was my birthday actually, and this was 2004, and then I remember coming home, or I remember uh, coming home the night before, you know, I, I went to sleep, the next morning was gonna be my birthday, um, and I just remember like waking up, and then like my mom wasn't there, there was nobody in the house, which was really weird, because I expected like for somebody to be there to like say happy birthday, or, or something like that. Nobody was there, so I ended up taking off, going hanging out with some friends. My mom gets a hold of my friends, and then like says that I need to come home. There's a family emergency, and then they just basically told me, like my mom told me just, just come over here, just sit down, just sit down, and then I just sort of like 
I don't want to sit down, just what's going on, you know, just tell me what's going on. And then she said, uh, well, they, they found your brother uh, dead, shot, shot three times in the head, execution style, and they left him, you know, by the Mexico border. Um, and then <clears throat> from there, uh, it kind of just went downhill for me. Like, you know, my brother getting killed, basically. Uh, I don't, I don't know how, where, or how I got this, this, this thought process, but I just felt like um, I wanted to like pick up where he left off. Like, first, it was more like of a revenge thing. Like, I, I was gonna go in the streets and I was gonna figure out like who who killed my brother. And uh, you know, I just wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to get some payback, pretty much. So <clears throat> that's the reason why I got into the gangs, you know. And and I thought I was doing my brother, you know, like paying him homage, pretty much. Like they called him Spider. I took over the name Little Spider. That was me. And uh, so I wanted to make a name for myself. I wanted to make a reputation for myself, and I want I wanted to like make my brother proud. For some reason, I thought he'd be proud of that because that's what he was doing, um, you know. And, and I didn't, I didn't think. Obviously, I was a kid. I wasn't thinking, you know, the way I should have been, which he probably wouldn't have wanted me to do that. But <clears throat> so that's what I did. I stopped, uh, stopped going to school. Uh, pretty much just went hang out with all the homies on the block, and uh, started smoking weed. Started doing crystal, um, and from there it was just like. Obviously, getting into trouble, um, I was in and out of juvenile hall pretty much um, from the time I was 14 or 15, um, all the way up until you know I was an adult. I was in and out of juvenile hall. Um, I actually escaped from a juvenile camp um, with me and like three or four other guys. And uh, in juvenile hall, that it was just a continuation of the streets. Like um, pretty much uh, in the streets, you're trying to make a reputation in the gang. When you go to juvenile hall, you're trying to make a reputation in there as well. So I was constantly fighting in there. Uh, you know, if, and if you didn't fight and you got out and your homeboys heard about it, you, were, you weren't going to be accepted or you were just going to be labeled like a bitch. Like everybody knew you were a fucking a bitch or a lame. So <clears throat> I was fighting in there nonstop. When I turned 18, um, uh, they put through the, like this work readiness program where like taught me how to interview for a job uh taught me how to dress you know they they they, they taught us like all these things um and then when i got out they basically um had employers that would that would hire us for like a trial period and then they would the county of san diego would pay them for the first hundred hours or pay our salary for the first hundred hours i was doing that and i was working at foot locker in the mall in, in Grossmont in uh, San Diego. And uh, I remember uh, going to work, you know, it was cool and everything, but I was still hanging out with the homies on my off days or like when I got off work, I was still hanging out with the homeboys. Um, and then I just remember one day I was supposed to go to work um, and, I, and I didn't go. Like I, I called in and made up some excuse and I told them like, hey, I got to do some community service or something like that. And, and they're like, oh yeah, no problem. So really I was going to hang out with the homies and they were, they were having like a little kickback at this, at one of the, the spots. And so I ended up walking and I have two of my homeboys with me. One was 15, the other one was 16. And then I had just turned 18. I just remember walking down the street with them and then this older guy just basically, he's probably like 30 years old. Uh, he was hanging out like in the mouth of this alley and he was drinking like a 40 ounce of some beer. And uh, he just like came up to us and like, what's up, you know, where are you guys from? So we ended up telling him where he's from and, and we tell him where we're from and then like he disrespects our, our gang and tries to swing on me. Um, and I just, you know, I just start, just start fighting him. So like I'm fighting this dude, this grown man, I'm barely 18, I'm fighting this dude and um, I didn't know but uh, like one of my, <clears throat> while I'm fighting him, one of my younger homeboys that's with me ended up stabbing him. Uh, and they like, they stabbed him pretty good. Like they, the knife was stuck in him. So they stabbed him and ran. And as they ran across the street, I guess this guy was having a memorial for one of their homeboys that had passed away in a car accident. And uh, so uh, they took off running. I didn't notice this dude had a bunch of his homeboys that were inside this church that came out of the church and started chasing my homeboys. And then they seen me 
And then like everybody's asking me, everybody was like yelling at me. What did you do? You know, what did you do? Why did you why did you do this to him? And and even the dude is like like looking at me like, why why did you stab me? And I'm like, dude, I like I didn't fucking stab you. You know what I mean? Like I I was just beating your ass pretty much, you know? Like I had like a like a fake pistol on me. It looked real, it was metal and everything. It was a BB gun. Um, and all his homeboys, some of his homeboys came at me, like pulled out knives and stuff. So like I pulled this gun out, this fake gun. And uh, obviously it looked real to everybody because everybody started running. Um, and then I pretty much just like chased one or two of them down and like was beating them with, with, with the gun with because it was metal, like a real gun. So um, then like I run across the street to check on my little homeboys um, and they, two, two, his homeboys have them cornered in this, uh, in this auto repair place. They have them cornered. So I run up on them with the gun and they take off running and they ended up cutting the 15 year old homeboy of mine with the box cutter and they cut him open. Um, and, uh, so we try to leave and, uh, the, the homeboy's like, man, it hurts. I can't, I, I can't, I can barely even like walk without it hurting. So I tell him, hey, just sit, on, sit down on the curb. The cops are going to be here soon. The ambulance is going to be here soon. Um, you know, you don't say my name. Don't say, homie, don't say nobody's name. Just tell them, you know, you got stabbed and they're going to take care of you. They're going to take you to the hospital. But we got to get out of here because we're not trying to go to jail. My other homeboy didn't want to leave him. So I'm arguing with my homeboy like, we got to get out of here. By the time we're done arguing, we're, we're about to leave. A cop rolls up on us with his gun drawn and told us to sit on the curb. So we sit on the curb. I have a like white t-shirt on. I have blood on my t-shirt. Um, so off the, off the bat, it, you know, it, it's, it's bad. And then, uh, <clears throat> they put me in the, in the back of the cop car. They put him in the back of the cop car. They take my homeboy to the, to the hospital in the, in the ambulance. I just told him like, Hey, you know, yeah, I, I beat this dude up, but I didn't stab nobody. Um, well, they're like, well, who stabbed him? Then? Cause everybody's saying that you stabbed him. They said it was the white guy. The other, obviously I'm from a Mexican gang. These two other guys with me ain't white. So they're like, everybody's saying it was the white guy. And I'm just like. I mean, I can understand why it would look like that, because I was beating his ass. I didn't know that he was he had he had been stabbed, you know, like so anyways, I ended up going to jail. I'm not gonna tell on my homeboy because that's just something you don't do out there. Um uh, you do that out there, you're you are you are never safe. You're never you'll never be safe. Um so I go to jail. I remember my homeboy's mom even putting money on my books and answering my phone calls from jail and just telling me thank you for not telling on my son and you know, and I just said, it, you know, it's, it's okay, you know, I, I'm not going to do that to, to somebody that's like my friend. I'm not going to do that to anybody. So I ended up going to prison at 18, um, ended up doing, I ended up going to trial actually. So I was in county jail for, for 10 months. And keep in mind, I still got the same mentality. So in the county jail, I'm like making a name for myself still. Because I'm white from, from a Mexican gang and when I get into the jail system there, it's all politics in there. Um, you got blacks, you got whites, you got uh, Sudanios, which is the Mexicans, and then you, you have Faisals, which are Mexicans that aren't gang related, that are from Mexico. Um, and then you have uh, others, which would be Asians, uh, Islanders, uh, that would be the others. So the, they're all different, different groups, pretty much, and, and like you can't sell up with anybody if they're not your race. Uh, you can't eat at the table with somebody that's not your race. So in there, um, I just, being white, running with the Mexicans, uh, to, like I was tested more than anybody else. They're just like, hey, you, you know, hey, this dude needs to get beat up. Hey, this dude did this, you know, we need you to handle it. And uh, my older homeboys from my gang on the streets had put me up on game already and told me when you get in there, you can't say no. You can't say no because you're gonna put you're gonna put a blemish on, on on our on our hood, basically like you know you're representing our hood. You got the hood tattooed on you. Like if they ask you to do something, you say yes. You know what I mean? So I said yes. You know I said yes. As a matter of fact, I didn't even say yes. I raised my hand. Like I if they wouldn't ask me, I'd raise my hand. I said I'll do it. And that was just just the hard head mentality that I that I had for for whatever reason. So basically, we go to trial. We pick the jury, uh, we go to trial. If I lose, my max is 17 years. But, you know, if I win, I, I, can, I can possibly get out. Um, so I go to trial, and, and in trial, um, the guy that got stabbed actually came to court. And uh, he came to court, and he, like, 
tattoo on the side of his neck. He had like the top button buttoned up and he walked in the courtroom in front of the jury like a super gangster. And uh, he like was me mugging me for a little bit and just walked up and I just like, you know, my lawyer told me like, don't look at him. Like, don't, 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 don't stare at him like, like, like in a mean way or nothing like that. Um, you know, cause the jury's going to be watching you, you know? And then I was like, okay. So I just stood there. They start asking him the questions and they get to the question. They say, so is the guy that stabbed you in the courtroom today? And he pretty much just looks around. He looks me straight in the eye and he says, no, he's not. And I look at my lawyer and I'm like, and I, I was happy. I said, so I'm going home, right? And my lawyer says, no, you're, it's not that simple. He's like, they're going to bring the officer that took his statement the, the day that it happened that said it was a white guy with a white t-shirt. And they're going to, they're going to, they're going to put the officer on the stand and let the officer say what his initial statement was. So they bring the officer in. The officer says, yeah, he said it was a white guy with a white t-shirt. Mr. Hawley was a block away. He had a white t-shirt with blood on it, uh, you know, pretty much. So then they get, they get through it. Um, basically all the witnesses, even this guy's people that knew him said that this guy was a bad guy. This guy starts fights all the time. Uh, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so. So this dude's image was, was horrible in front of the jury. Um, and then, but so was mine because they got up there and they brought gang, like gang detectives on the stand basically to say that I was a documented gang member from a known criminal street gang that has been uh, known for like murder, assault, robberies. They started like naming all that stuff that had nothing to do with my case just because I was a part of that gang. Um, <clears throat> so at the end of the day, the jury finds me guilty of assault with a deadly weapon under the aiding and abating law because and then they found me uh guilty of the acting in furtherance of a criminal street gang however they found me not guilty of being the person that personally inflicted the great bodily injury basically they found me not guilty of being the stabber and the reason being is because they had a dna expert come up on the stand that said my dna was excluded from the knife handle um, so because that charge of the great bodily injury got dropped it was no longer a violent felony it was just a serious felony so that dropped my max from 17 to 10 um so they would only be able to give me 10. so i write a letter before my sentencing to the to, to the judge and i told the judge like hey man i'm just an 18 year old kid i've been on a bad path like you know you you take 10 years of my life away i don't know what good that's going to do for me you give me another shot you know this and this and that uh, you know, I got a family, you know, like I'm just a regular 18 year old kid, like every other 18 year old kid, I've just been led a different way, you know? And, um, so she ends up basically saying, I'm not going to give you the max. You're just a baby. I'm going to give you two years. You are going to get the strike. I'm going to give you two years. She said, I don't want to ever see you in this courtroom again. So <clears throat> I, I go to prison for two years. Um, I was supposed to get out early, like, if, but I obviously couldn't stay out of trouble in there. First time I get in there, I, I, I went straight to the hole because um, that was new for me. Prison was a new thing. It's my first time going to prison. I, I'm going to have to, they're going to test me. They're going to make me do something. Um, so I end up doing two years. Um, I get out. I get out. I go right back to the homies. Right back to the homies. Uh, my mom's back on drugs again. She relapsed. Um, uh, my brother's still in prison. My sister's out in drugs now. She gave the baby up for adoption. Um, I ended up just like telling myself every time I go, this is my last time, I'm not coming back in here. I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna do good. And I'll get out, I'll do good for a little bit. And then I would just go right back to it, go right back to it. Um, until finally, you know, I just, you know, I just finally say that like, that's enough. You know, like I, I had, I had family, you know, I had family out here I moved out here to Arkansas, and um, I just pretty much was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get out of here. You know, I'm gonna get out of here. Um, so I left, pretty much left Arkansas. I mean, left left California for Arkansas, and then came out here. And then um, my family out here is doing really well. Uh, so I had a very good support system, um, and I've been out here maybe five years, and. Uh, since then, it's just been nothing but uphill, really, for me. Uh, there's always going to be a couple speed bumps or whatever, but, you know, um, with my mindset and my mentality, uh, you know, nothing, nothing's going to stop me from, like, doing what I want to do. And what I want to do is I want to be successful. Um, 
whatever it is I choose to do, you know, obviously I'm an assistant manager at this furniture store now. And I'm shooting for the stars, though. I'm like, I'm, I want to be a district manager, maybe even own my own furniture store one day. You know, like, um, still a long way to go, but uh, I've made it a long way from where I was at.